mode, I'm in beast mode Gunner for the top, cock back, reload I'm a new man with a new attitude But don't get me wrong, I'm still me though I'm all in now, I ain't bluffing I risk everything, regret nothing My determination's disgusting So every day my ass, I'm busting Yo, what is going down everybody? It is straight out of the Boston, or aka the King of Boston, and today we have episode 19 of the Tennessee Titans Connected Careers Mode. This is going to be week 17 going up against the Jacksonville Jaguars, I do believe. And today we're pretty much going to be playing, you know, just our reserve players, our bench players. You don't want to get anybody hurt the week before the playoff start. Everybody, or uh, sorry, I shouldn't say that. I should say that we have clinched home field advantage, so we really don't have anything to play for. So you're going to be seeing us going up against the 8-7 and seven Jacksonville Jaguars who are going to fight for a playoff spot here. If they win, they are in. If they lose, it's going to be a little bit tough. But, you know, they're going to have to rely on some other teams losing, some other teams winning, such. But, anyway, I do want to let you guys know that tomorrow I'm going to be doing a little recap video. I'm going to just show you guys some season stats, some awards, some, you know, who made the Pro Bowl and stuff like that. So look out for that tomorrow. I'll probably post that and a blacktop game. We'll see. I'm not really sure yet if I'll post a blacktop gameplay as well. But anyway, and then you'll see Thursday will be the first week of the playoffs, and it'll be the divisional round against, I don't really know yet who we're playing, but, well, actually I do, because I already recorded the wild card, you know, season recap or whatever, and I already know who we're playing, but I'm not going to spoil it, I'm going to leave it to, I'm going to leave it for you guys to watch the video, I should say. But anyway, you can see some of the notable backups in, like, Matt Hasselback, Kendall Wright's getting the start at wide receiver with, I believe, Lavelle Hawkins backing him up, Javon Ringer got the start at running back. And I pretty much replaced all of our starters except for the offensive line. I kept the offensive line in there because I think I rely on my offensive line a lot. And, yeah, I don't know. I feel like I would have struggled a lot more in this game if I had kept the backups in. But I believe none of them got hurt. So, you know, we're set on that one. But you see we found Toby Gerhardt in the end zone there. So we go up 7-3. to three, And then the next possession for the Titans, we're finding Owen Schmidt out of the backfield. Owen Schmidt is having a Pro Bowl type year. Really glad we signed him in the preseason. I knew he was something special. I knew he was a good receiving fullback, which is something I like in this game. But we're here, we're going to hit Kendall Wright, and Kendall Wright's going to speed his way into the end zone, put us up 14-3. to So Kendall Wright really looking good today, type of play over the last few weeks. He's really giving us a lot of options at wide receiver. You know, if Nate Washington decides to retire in a few years because he is getting up there in age, you know, Kendall Wright can easily step into his role. Or if we decide to, you know, part ways with Kenny Britt, who's really struggled all year. And, you know, he just, he just gives us a lot of options. Javon Ringer there is going to fumble with Dwight Lowry on their recovery for the Jacksonville Jaguars. So they're in business. They're in scoring position. Not scoring position, but, you know, they're they're in a good position to score. Chad Henney drops back. He has tons of time. He's looking. He's looking. He's going to fire it over to Mercedes Lewis for the pickup of 10 yards out of UCLA. 22 yards in the day. And then also out of UCLA, MJD Maurice Jones-Drew, you know, just piles his way over the defender. And it's going to pick up another first down. This is going to set up a second and six ball on the 13-yard line. MJD once again getting the first down. It's going to set up a first and goal on the six. So skipping ahead, third and goal on the one-yard line. Hedy drops back. He's looking. And he is going to find his man, Zach Miller, into the back of the end zone for the touchdown. So the Jacksonville Jaguars close to a four-point game. But Matt Hasselbeck would respond. Hopefully he's looking. He's looking. He's going to actually end up inter throwing an interception to Paul Puzlozny. I can't, I, I can't, I can't pronounce it. Paul Puzz, I think it's Paul Puzz's name, out of Penn State. I remember when he was out of Penn State, you know, like six, seven years back. I think he was so good. I didn't know if he was going to be a pro type player, but he's really proven to be one on this Jacksonville Jaguars defense. But anyway, Chad Henney and the Jaguars would take over, and Justin Blackman's going to pick up the nice catch there, about nine or ten yards. Does pick up the first down. Now third and six ball on the ten yard line. Then the handoff to Rashad Jennings. He's going to fumble, but Jones on the recovery. I don't know if that's Greg Jones. It might be Greg Jones. But that would set up a 4th and 5. And Josh Scobie would be out to kick his second field goal of the game, as you can see. So the Jacksonville Jaguars cut it to a 1-point game. And now the Titans are back on offense. Hasselback's going to fire it. Or not fire it yet, but he's dropping back. He's actually going to be tackled in the end zone. He's going to fumble it, but our offensive lineman would recover it. And that would end up in a, in a safety, David Stewart, on the recovery there. So it's 15-14 to 14 Jaguars now. They're making a game out of this. But here, we are going to find Kendall Wright for the first down. Another nice catch by him. A perfect throw by Matt Hasselbeck. And then Hasselbeck drops back once again. He's looking. He's actually going to be intercepted by Aaron Ross, the former New York Giant. So the Jaguars would take over. And that would pretty much wrap it up for this half, as you're going to see here in a sec. The Jaguars would take over, but Chad Henney would drop back. He would fire over. He, it's actually going to be caught by Laurent Robinson. Timeout Jaguars. They're going to bring up the field goal team, and Josh Scobie's going to kick it up, and it is actually good. 
So the Jaguars do take the four-point lead going into halftime. A little bit surprising there. I didn't actually recall that happening, but my bad. Anyway, skipping ahead into the third quarter. Now, first play from scrimmage for the Titans. We're going to fire it over to Lavelle Hawkins. He's going to break a tackle, and Lavelle Hawkins is gone. If you remember this kid in the preseason, he had a lot of these big plays. He really had a lot of potential, it seemed like, and it looks like he is showing that here in his first start of the year. So Lavelle Hawkins gets his first touchdown on just his like second catch of his, the season, I think. I think all of his catches came today, so in this game. But Chad Henney is going to fire it over to Zach Miller, and Zach Miller is going to pick up about eight yards there, his second catch of the game, if you remember that touchdown earlier. And now Chad Henney is going to run the counterplay to Maurice Jones. Doing Maurice Jones doing is a huge hole. Colin McCarthy is going to you know slow him down a little bit, and then... We would wrap him up on the rest of the tackle, but that's going to set up a first down ball in these 26. Now third and five on the 21-yard line. Henny drops back. He's still looking. He's got tons of time. He had time all day. His offensive line had a great day. He fires this one over. It's going to be incomplete, so a nice deflection there by the Tennessee Titans secondary. If you did not realize, we are wearing those AFL uniforms, which I really like. I will uh, not be wearing those in the playoffs, but you know, I figured I'd throw them on for the last game of the regular season. But anyway, Josh Kobe kicks the third field goal of the day, and that would tie the game up at 21. Now, Brett Kern on to punt after a three and out from the Tennessee Titans. This one's going to be returned by Mike Thomas. Mike Thomas is going to have a decent return, but the big play here was the face mask which would give the Jaguars incredible field, well, not incredible, but it'd give them great field position, as you're going to see they accept it, and the ball is going to be on the 45-yard line, so first and 10 for the Jaguars, handoff to Maurice Jones-Drew, Jones-Drew gets a block, he's going to try and spin away, but he's only going to end up picking about 11 yards, I say only, but, you know, that that play, that a big play potential right there, so, anyway, third and one now, ball on the 25-yard line, Hedy drops back, he's going to pitch it to Rashad Jennings, and Rashad Jennings just did not work out all day today as a third down back for the Jaguars, I think they need to stick with MJD if they want to have some success running the football on third down, but Josh Scobie's going to kick his fourth field goal of the day, putting the Jaguars up 24-21, to so with the Titans backups in, the Jaguars are really looking good, they're really looking like they could come away with the victory here potentially, but Dennis Dixon in now for Matt Hasselbeck, decided to give Dixon a try, but the main story of this second half was Javon Ringer, who now quietly has 84 rushing yards on the day, he's had a quiet day, but a pretty nice one, and it's going to get even bigger, as you'll see soon. Dennis Dixon's going to drop back third and eight. He's going to do what he does best. He did this all the time in college at Oregon. He's going to scramble his way for the first down, his first carry of the day, his first carry of the season. He hasn't played since the preseason. Now Dixon drops back once again. He's still looking. He's going to scramble once again. And using those legs, Dennis Dixon is going to pick up the first down, 19 yards rushing already. I did sign this guy in the preseason. I loved him at Oregon. He's one of my favorite quarterbacks of all time, even though He's not a pretty mediocre NFL quarterback, but he's going to find Kendall Wright for Kendall Wright's second touchdown of the game. So Kendall Wright, like I said earlier, had a really nice day. You can see it there. And a really nice throw by Dennis Dixon. I was, I was glad to see that. You know, his arm accuracy is not his strength, to say the least. But anyway, he's going to do what any great quarterback would do when you have a running back who's having a good day. Hand it off to him, and Javon Ringer's going to pick up a nice game there. Second and three for the Tennessee Titans. Javon Ringer now... Carries it to the right side, turns the corner, and is going to get a huge gain down the sideline, and he will not be stopped. Javon Ringer is going to put us up by 11 points, looking like we might start to pull away here as we're going to go up 35-24. to 24. Javon Ringer on the nice catch there. Just not, not catch, run, obviously. I'm an idiot, but anyway... Now a 4th and 10 for the Jaguars on their next possession. They need to get some offense going. They fire it deep, and that's going to somehow not be pass interference, but we'll take it. We would take over with the ball on the 35-yard line. Now 2nd and 8 on the 33. Javon Ringer once again continues his great day. Ringer was great at Michigan State. Not, you know, an NFL-type running back, but he's really looking good so far in this game. And now 1st and 10 for the 23-yard line. Javon Ringer once again showing that speed. Now, you know, not really a guy known for his speed, not really known for much of anything. Doesn't do anything exceptionally well, but he just does a lot of things, you know, decently, at least in this connected career mode, and he's going to pick up another touchdown. So Javon Ringer continuing his impressive day, I believe his second touchdown of the game. So really nice to see Javon Ringer. I mean, we really have three solid running backs, and on another fourth down, he Chad Henney would fire it short to Mike Thomas, but that would not work out. So we would take over once again with great field position. And we would end up running the clock out. As you can see, Mike Thomas was chewed out by Mike Malarkey there. But we would tack on a field goal, win 45-24. to But that is going to wrap up this gameplay. So hopefully you guys did enjoy. I hope you guys are excited for the playoffs. The divisional round will be out on Thursday. And then if we win that, the... Uh, 
AFC Championship will be out on a Sunday. If not, then you'll see the offseason video on Sunday. But either way, you can see Javon Ringer does get player of the game. And we went 45-24. to 24. You are going to see, as always, a little screenshot that does show me sharing it on Twitter, which does say, you know, I did play on All Madden because some people still like to not believe that I play on All Madden. But, you know, I, I'm just decent at this game. So... You're going to see the total stats here. We did dominate them in a lot of categories. They did have more first downs and power turn yards. And they, as usual, they won the turnover battle. But anyway, go over to the player stats. Matt Hasselbeck had a decent game, 8 of 16 for 183 yards. Dennis Dixon was only 2 of 11, but his two completions were pretty nice ones. So a little bit of promise there. We'll see if we you know, decide to re-sign him later. But Javon Ringer ending up with 206 yards and two touchdowns. Receiving-wise, Justin Blackman had a nice game. Lavelle Hawkins obviously had that huge gain earlier. And you can see the defensive stats there. But anyway, that is going to wrap up this video. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. And so as I'm out. Peace.